Hi everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to EV Automation Hub. So this is an ongoing series of K6 where we have already covered these many topics. So today's topic is threshold. We are going to learn about threshold. So threshold are the standards that determine if your test passes or fails. If your system under test does not meet the standards, then your test case will end with a failed state. So generally, thresholds are used to clearly define the performance goals like SLOs, which is basically the agreement about specific metrics like response time or total number of field requests. So these thresholds help you in defining and meeting your performance expectations. So today we will learn how to define threshold in the K6 script. We will learn two varieties. First, just we will see how we can define single threshold on a single metric. And then we will see how we can define multiple threshold on a single metric. So to learn this, let's go to editor and let's learn how to define threshold in a K6 test script. So this is my test case in which I'm importing HTTP so that I can call this different methods like get post. So over here, I'm calling the get API for this URL and I have defined my load options, options as two virtual users and two iterations, fine? So pretty simple. And when we run this test case, in the result summary, we can see these are the metric. Now, in order to define the threshold in your test case, you define your threshold based on this metric. For example, if you want to define it for HTTP request fail, or if you want to set it for HTTP request duration, you need to pass it for this metric. So in order to set the threshold in your test case, what you have to do inside your options object to pass the threshold property, we will pass thresholds and inside the thresholds, you can pass metric. For example, let's take the example of HTTP request failed. So I'll pass it like this. And for this HTTP request failure, I will check if the error rate is less than 1%. I'll pass it rate is less than 0.01, which means HTTP errors should be less than 1%. Now let's define one more metric over here. So let's take the other example of HTTP request duration. And inside it, let's verify that 95% of your requests are less than 200 milliseconds. So over here, you can see if I show you this result summary. So this is my result summary. HTTP request duration. This is my metric. Fine. So over here, we can see this is 149. But we can define this threshold inside our test case. Because what we will do, we will define the metric over here. And I will write it like this. P95, which means 95% of your request duration. And whatever threshold value you want to define. So I am going to define it like this. It should be less than 200 milliseconds. So this is defined in milliseconds. Fine. If you want to pass in the second, you have to pass it like this. Fine. So let's test it for 200 milliseconds for now. Fine. So this is a pretty simple test case in which we are calling the gate API for two virtual users for two iterations. And then we have set our threshold for request failure and for request duration. Fine. So you have to run it in the same way. Go to your terminal. Let me just clear it out. And in order to run this, what you have to do, you have to use the command k6 run use script name. So my script name is threshold test.js. Now if I run it, it will display the results like this. So you see, this is getting passed. HTTP request duration. So we are expecting over here, P95 should be less than 200 milliseconds. So it is actually less than 200 milliseconds. You see over here, this is 162. And if I request failure, it should be less than one post. We can see this is 0% for now, fine. And in the result, you can see this is pass. Now let's test one negative case also. I know over here, this is 162. Let's say if you want to verify how your test case will behave in case of failure threshold. So how we can check that? Let me pass over here 100. I know I can see from the metric, it will be more than 100. But I just want to show you a failure scenario. Now let's go to terminal and rerun the same command. So this time, if your test case fails, you see this red cross, that means this threshold is failed. So over here, the P95 is 253, but we are expecting it to be less than 100. Fine. So this is not matching our criteria. And in the end also, it will exit with this the error code 0001. And it is threshold on metric HTTP request duration has been crossed. So now we have seen both positive and negative case over here. I will just revert it back to the original one. This is scenario in which we are running single threshold for a single metric. What if we want to verify multiple threshold for a single metric? For example, for HTTP request duration, I also want to check P99 and P90. 
So you cannot pass it like multiple times over here because this is these are the properties of JavaScript object and you can't specify multiple ones with the same name. So in order to handle that, what we will do, we will define all the threshold within the array. So how we are going to do that? For example, I also want to verify if P90, which is 90% of your request duration is, let's take 195 millisecond and let's define the last one as P99, which means 99% of your request duration is, for example, let's take the example of 300 milliseconds. So what it is doing, it will check if your 95% of your request duration is in 200 millisecond, 90% is less than 195 millisecond and 99 is less than 300 millisecond. You can read more about this 95 percentile, 99 percentile. These are very important when you learn about load testing. Now let's go to terminal and let's rerun the same command. And we can see our test case has executed successfully. And in the end, you can see there is no error code over here. Fine. So this is how you can run multiple threshold for a single metric. So yes, that's it for today's video. We learned about threshold. So threshold in CASICs are really powerful features which help you define your performance criteria for your load test. So by defining these thresholds, you can ensure your application meets the desired performance standards and quickly identify if there is any issue. So today we learned about using the built-in metrics, which are, for example, this HTTP request field or HTTP duration. You can also use the custom metric if you want to learn more about it. K6 has a very detailed documentation and you can learn more about how to use threshold for the custom metrics in your test case. Fine. So I hope you like the video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends who are looking to learn K6. And thank you for watching.